and welcome to our second Needle and Thread series. I'm Christine Cooper, Manager of Public Programs, the York County History Center. Over the next few weeks, we'll be working on a very special sewing project. For hundreds of years, women have used clothing as a means of expression and opportunity. The York County History Center has an extensive collection of clothing and dress objects. From these objects, we learn about the person that wore it and the person that made it. In our first Needle and Thread series, we recreated a gown from the York County History Center collection. In this series, we're doing things a little differently. In the early morning hours of June 17, 1916, an automobile rolled off a rail car in Jersey City. Later, it would create a sensation in downtown Manhattan, not simply because of its ivory paint, silver-plated rims, or rose-colored curtains, but also because it was being driven by silent film star Florence Labatee. Here at the History Center, we joke that all roads lead to York. Labatee may not have had any personal connections to York, but her well-appointed Pullman certainly did. It was manufactured here. The Deluxe Coupe, a model Pullman designed and marketed specifically for women, was manufactured here. The York County History Center has its own Deluxe Coupe. Far less flashy than Florence's, but still a symbol of the changing times and roles of women when it was made in 1916. That's why it is an important object for our new museum's core exhibit. To create our last needle and thread project, I worked from an extant garment, and then recreated it as closely as possible to the original. For that project, I could take measurements, examine details, and go back to it if I had questions. That's not possible for this project. To sew an interpretation of Florence Labatee's suit, I'll need to take a different approach using a variety of sources. First is the photo of Labatee with her deluxe coupe. Unfortunately, the flash from the photographer washed out all of the detail in Labatee's ivory suit. What we can see is a loosely fitting jacket with a dropped waist and belt. Her skirt is a simple A-line resting just above the ankle. Next, I paid a visit to our library and archives. These fashion plates from the American Furrier, fall of 1916, show us upscale outerwear that follows the silhouettes of popular styles of clothing, including a looser fitting bodice and wide hem. These images show us some seam lines, but again, not exactly what we're looking for. Our best resource for this project is the York County History Center's three-dimensional collection. This suit, owned by Cora Watt Kane, dates from about 1912 to 1917. And even though it's a winter suit, this has some of the details that we're looking for. The baby suit appears to have a fur collar, loosely fitting bodice. Here we can see pleats on the waist that would create some of this fullness. It also has fitted sleeves and an A-line skirt. The skirt has a wide hem of 72 inches, a gross grain ribbon interior waistband, and hook and eye and snap closures at the back. The suit also has other interesting details that we could incorporate. The buttons on the front and sleeve were made by covering button forms with the same wool as the suit and with additional decoration. On the back, these embroidered feather appliques add interest and additional gathering to create additional fullness. The jacket also features an asymmetric front closure. Weights sewn into the jacket hem ensure that it hangs properly. Thanks for watching. In part two, we'll talk about our design choices, including fabrics and other necessary materials. We'll also make the pattern and mock-up. So stick around.